Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Sorry for that mix-up. Happens from time to time. But we have a first guest on a first major discussion uh, set to join us. But let's uh, give you a brief background to that. Well, from, from defecting or for defecting from uh, the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress, uh, APC, a boy state governor, David Umahi, his deputy, Dr. Kelechi Igwe, um, have to vacate the offices. This is according to an order issued yesterday by Justice Iyang Ekwo of the Federal High Court Abuja, a decision which seems to have opened a new vista in Nigeria's political landscape. Justice Ekwo uh, said the move from the PDP to the APC was illegal and unconstitutional. Uh, the judgment followed suits filed by the People's Democratic Party seeking the removal of the governor and his deputy uh, from office for abandoning the party. Justice Akwa said the depositions of the third and fourth defendants, Umahi and Igwe, in their counter affidavit were, quote, evasive and insufficient, end of quote, to com competently challenge the plaintiff's originating process. Now, it was the opinion of the court that the immunity clause in Section 308 of the Nigerian Constitution is not absolute. Section 308, the judge said, is a veritable constitutional shield, while adding that it was not inserted for political reasons. Now, Umayi and his deputy had filed a notice of preliminary objection uh, challenging the suit by the People's Democratic Party, arguing that Section 308 of the 1999 Constitution provided immunity to them from the plaintiff's suit and that the votes cast during the said elections belonged to them uh, and not the plaintiff, going by the provisions of the Electoral Act 2010 and the recent Supreme Court pronouncements. However, the court disagreed with them and held that Omahi and Igwe did not controvert the deposition that total votes scored in an election belong to a political party. That's not all. In another judgment, the judge sacked 15 members of the Eboy State House of Assembly who defected from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress on the same grounds that the governor was removed. Reactions quickly followed this judgment, with Umar himself declaring that he was still governor of Eboy State and faulted uh, the trial just judge, Iyagako. The People's Democratic Party in the state, however, described the ruling as a victory for all Ebongians. That's the people of Eboi State saying it was or it marked uh, the end of what they call impunity and rascality. The People's Democratic Party further said it had submitted the names of its nominees to replace David Umahi and Eric Igwe as governor and deputy governor of Eboi State, respectively, to the independent national Electoral Commission. Now, speaking on the development at a media briefing yesterday, Iyo Chair Ayu, the PDP national chairman, said the party has nominated Iduma Agariwe and Fred Odogu to replace Umahi and Igwe as governor and deputy governor. He said that after consultations with stakeholders in Eboy State, the party has put forward the names of these two individuals, Iduma Agariwe, as the new governor and Fred Odogu as his deputy. But the question on many lips is, who is the governor of Eboni State as we speak? Who is the governor of Eboni State as we speak? It's a million now question, if you want to call it. But joining us this morning to answer this and other questions, let's welcome Mande Ubani, who is a legal practitioner. Dr. Mande Ubani, good morning to you, and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. All right. So uh, let's start off by answering that question. Who is the governor of a boy state as we speak? As we speak, uh, the governor of a boy state is engineer David Umai and uh, his deputy. Uh, because what was decided yesterday was a court case. Uh, and I know that the appellate options is not foreclosed for any person in Nigeria. Uh, you still have to appeal against any decision. And if uh, I may uh, know my law right, you have 90 days uh, to appeal because this is not a, a pre-election matter. This is a, a matter that is actually uh, uh, instituted after the man has been sworn in as a, as a governor of the state. And within our procedural laws and the constitutional provisions, 
And even in our statutes, you know, still have 90 days within which to appeal on any decision uh, that has been rendered in any court of law. Uh, that I know. Uh, I don't know whether they have taken that away. Even if the judgment is that he must be replaced immediately, he still have a right of appeal. And he must exhaust all his appellate uh, uh, choices you know, before that decision can stand. That I, as much as I know. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you say that um, uh, David Umahi and his deputy did not put up a strong argument in their defense? Because they, in their deposition, cited Section 308 of the Nigerian Constitution, which uh, talks about the immunity clause, uh, saying that um, uh, the suit by the PDP um, should not stand because, as far as they're con concerned, the, that section of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended, um, protects them from the suit. That, that, that would be one of the grounds of appeal. I know that if you are elected today as a governor, as a president, or as deputy, or vice, uh, you enjoy immunity uh, under the constitution, you know, from being sued uh, to avoid a situation where you'll be distracted. That was the reason why those who drafted the 1999 constitution inserted that particular section that actually grants immunity to the executive uh, when they are in power. It's only when they leave power you can take some of those uh, uh, legal uh, uh, actions against them. So it will be certainly one of the grants of appeal. But I think, I don't know how probably, I don't know whether they argued it or they omitted it. I think the most potent argument with regards to this particular case would be the position of the constitution with regards to defection of an executive. If you are a member of the legislative assembly, whether at the federal or at the state level, you cannot defect another political party unless you prove that there is crisis within the political, within your own political party, making, giving you good reason for your cause, for you now to move to another political party. That I know. That is applicable only to members of legislative assembly. But when it concerns the executive, either the governor or the president, the constitution is very silent. There was no time the constitution makes a provision that if a governor does defect without any reason or without good reason, then he is uh, liable to be removed by the court of the law. Uh, I, I don't have that provision or I don't know of such a provision in the constitution. Uh, so if the real issue for the termination was the defection of Umayi and his deputy, uh, and now the governor has been removed by the court, yeah, what section of the law did the court cite that was the good reason actually to say, oh, because you have defected, you have offended the, the provision of this constitution, and for that reason, you are going to be removed. And I don't, I don't, I don't we're not talking about voting or not voting, we're talking about vote belonging to political party, we're talking about the issue of defection. And is there any ground for removal of a governor? And I don't think there is any. And the constitution itself has been very elaborate as to the reasons for removing a governor who has been properly elected. There is a provision in the constitution. Can be either impeachment, or if he's incapacitated medically, or he resigns, or he dies. I mean, these are some of the measures how a governor who has been elected can be removed. But it's not this issue of defection. It's not a ground. I'm yet to see that's that ground in the constitution. And now, the issue that was before the court was his defection from uh, PDP to APC. And you have now gone ahead to remove that governor based upon the fact that he defected. Now, I am saying this without bias, because I, 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 I hate the issue of political prostitution that has been going on in over time in Nigerian political history, where governors or uh, legislators will be elected on that one platform, and within a short time, whether there is any reason or, was, or no reason whatsoever, they took Trump to another political party. That is political prostitution. People without principle. I am totally against it. But I will not, because of the fact that I have that personal hatred for this issue of prostitution in politics, then now begin to agree when there is no basis for certain things to be done because we must also operate within the realms of law. I don't see any legal, sudden legal ground for this removal that I just don't, don't know yesterday. And I can assure you that it's going to be a whole long way in, 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 in legal in legal fights because this matter will get to Supreme Court. I can assure you going to go to get to Supreme Court. And we and, and I'm giving you maybe a maximum period of two or three years.
because of the fact it's a political case. Ordinarily, if it's an ordinary case, you know, it will take up to 10 years before it's resolved. And by that time, Omai would have still remained in office and then complete his tenure. But and they say because it's politics, political case, they may give it a expeditious trial process. I mean, a hearing process. So maybe one or two years. And, you know, because you, you, know, you appeal and they bring a motion for stay. And until that appeal is determined, you cannot in any way get him out of office. So it is not as easy as it has been pronounced. And for a PDP rushing to go and nominate a candidate, and I'm sure they're playing politics. I'm sure they have not been properly advised because it is going to be practically impossible for any election to take place when there is a appellate uh, opportunities for somebody who is aggrieved. Uh, I think I think is a uh, it's funny to hear that they have actually gotten a replacement and they are ready to take take over power and all that. It's not as easy as uh, uh, it, it seems. All right, so, so um, Mondo Bani, let's also look at the, the you have mentioned the appellant uh, opportunity that's available right now for the governor and the deputy governor, as well as the legislatures. Do you see um, the, the federal, um, I mean, the court from the, the, the judgment from the federal court standing the test of the uh, Supreme Court? As I said earlier, I have mentioned it, you know, in my earlier analysis. But what is in contention is defection. For the executive, there is no provision in the constitution that is clearly an error for an executive to defect. There is no provision. The constitution is very silent as to what will happen or what are the consequences for a governor who defects. It's very clearly silent. But with regards to members of the house, yes, you have to prove that there is crisis from the political party you are coming, where you are coming from. But for the executive, it's silent. And so if the concern is very silent, you know, they, they cannot be a grant for removal because the constitution itself is also very exhaustive as to reasons for removing a governor who has been elected. So the, the issue of defection does not, does not fall within that, uh, of, you know, uh, available uh, uh, exemption, exemption, you know. So I am very, very doubtful whether this particular case will stand uh, the validity of, of the, of the call of a appellate, appellate court. I am very, very not too sure. I may, I may be wrong. But one thing I can assure you is that it's going to be a, a development in our jurisprudence. Our jurisprudence will be enriched by this particular decision that has just taken place. Morally, morally, most of us have been against this issue of people jumping in the morning. In fact, there was a particular governor that jumped to three political parties within one day. From one, you know, he was under in the PDP in the morning, in the afternoon he was in Abga, and in the night, I think he moved to another political party. Somewhere in, in, in Igbo state, I mean Abia, the former governor of uh, 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 of Abia state was once in a, in a, in a, a PPA. From PPA, he jumped to Abia, and then finally jumped back to PDP. In one day, in the morning, afternoon, and night. So nobody likes what is going on in our political landscape, where politicians, you know, jump uh, political parties. You know, it means that they don't even understand the meaning of political parties. Because oh. you have to believe in a principle and an ideology before you join a political party. But here, yeah, there is no uh, presence of ideology and principle in whatever these politicians do. So I'm totally against this issue of jumping from one political party to another. But then, I will not, because of my hatred for that, now begin to agree when a governor is removed without any solid legal basis or constitutional backing. I doubt whether this particular case will stand you know, the scrutiny of the, of the appellate courts. Just before Kofi comes in now, let, let's, let's look at the crux of the conversation. You have mentioned it in this conversation is the fact that, I mean, the argument here is that the votes were for the PDP. I mean, at the time he was a candidate, he was a part of the People's Democratic Party. And, you know, this uh, vote, those who actually casted their votes, casted it, you know, for this political Party. Now that he's moved from the PDP, you know, to the APC, would you describe this judgment of the federal, um, you know, high court as a legal issue? Would you say that the crux of this conversation is a moral issue or not necessarily because you are saying that it doesn't have any strong legal backings? Could this be a moral issue for the issue of defection? Clearly moral for the governors and president. Clearly moral. Because if the, if, the, if, the, if the drafters of the constitution clearly uh, frowns at the uh, movement of executive, they would have put it down there that this will be the consequence of a, of a, a government moving. It would have been in the constitution. And so if it does move, 
without any solid reason. These are the consequences. The Constitution should have made an elaborate provision concerning that, but it didn't. It only you know, made it with regards to legislative uh, arm of government. And so my, my problem with this case is that the Constitution 1 has made provision for removal of a government. This issue of defection is not one of them. That we need to understand. Then, on the issue of a uh, uh, vote belonging to political party or to individual, there has been discordant tones concerning the, uh, that principle. In one instance, they will say it belongs to individual. In another instance, they say it belongs to, uh, uh, what do you call it now? It belongs to uh, the, 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 uh, the political party. The decision of, uh, is it the other now? Is it not about the demand that is presently the governor of, uh, of Bayelsa State? Remember how we came in? Oh, yeah, dearie. That was uh, very beautiful. The demand that won the election belonged to APC. And his deputy, not the man himself that won the election, his deputy had an issue with his credentials. And pronouncement was made, removing a governor that was the elected. That had no issue whatsoever. But that because he had that issue with his deputy. I remember that the, the vote belonged to uh, the political party. But what happened? They just from no a PDP uh, candidate and then enthroned him as a governor of the state. Whereas we agree in principle that vote belonged to the political party. So if vote belonged to the political party, why was the PDP man uh, who never got any any such vote who made the governor. So there are issues, you know, there is this current tone with this regards of uh, with regards to this issue of uh, whether vote belong to political party. But in any case, Amethyst's case, you know, which is the Supreme Court case, has been amended even by a statute. So that you cannot make somebody a governor who has not undergone all the process of electoral, the, all the electoral process. You can't just from nowhere because you know and bring somebody and say he is going to be the governor if he doesn't you know under you know didn't undergo the, the political process of, of contest. So again, we must understand that. And so it is not something that is clearly certain. But one thing I am sure is that the issue that was before the court, which is an issue of contention, was whether if you defect as a governor, whether you can lose your seat. And I'm saying that there's no provision in the law that says this is a consequence for a governor defecting. There is a consequence for a legislator defecting, yes. But for a governor, was there any provision? And then secondly, the strong point, another strong point, is whether you can, you know, uh, uh, remove a governor based upon the fact that he defects. Can you remove a governor based on the fact that he defects? You know, I, 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 I doubt that very much. And then the Federal High Court, does Federal High Court actually have jurisdiction over this case? These are issues that we can raise in court of appeal. Does federal high court, after a governor has been elected, have jurisdiction over this particular political, whether a governor uh, seat is going to be vacant or that of the legislator is going to be vacant? Is it a federal high court case or a state high court case? Issue of jurisdiction will come in. And of course, if it does not fall within the purview of the federal high court, as defined under section 251 of the 1999 constitution, that again, means that that decision has been reached by inquiry because without jurisdiction, which is a live wire of any particular matter, uh, it, it, it cannot go it cannot go on. There, there is no basis for that decision because without jurisdiction, it will have no basis for you to have reached that particular decision. The issue of immunity of a governor that has been duly elected will also be an issue to converse on appeal. So there are many issues to be conversed. And I tell you, as I said earlier, it's going to enrich our jurisprudence. It's going to enrich our jurisprudence. And we are ready to learn. We are ready to see what the decision of the appellate court will be. But it's not going to be easy for whoever okay. has won this case. Okay. It's not going to be easy. Very quick one. Very, very quick one, please. A very, very brief answer. Um, of course, um, the Electoral Act 2010 is, is there, clear for all to see, and the provisions therein. And uh, a recent Supreme Court pronouncement on the issue of defect, defection, uh, we are aware of some governors who were taken to court um, uh, by, by the, their parties in their respective states. Um, how come... A, a judge of the ilk of Iyagako, of the Federal High Court, um, is given a contrary uh, uh, ruling to previous rulings. For instance, one that has recently been given by the Supreme Court and the others that you have cited. Mm, he, is a, he is a human being. Um, he is not, he's not a blue error. And that's why we have the appellate court. We have appellate court in order to correct if any error occurs downstairs. Are you following me? So he is a human being. 
he may have heard, he may have probably believed in this issue of that uh, votes belong to political party. Mm. And, it, and it's on that basis he reached his decision. So, being a human being, he can, he can, he can hear. You know, but if he fails to now probably adhere to uh, what you call precedent and believe on his own line of thought, then the agreed party has the right to climb upstairs, which is what I think the governor and the deputy will do this morning. They will likely file the appeal and bring a motion for state. It's not going to be easy, as I said earlier, uh, okay. it's not going to be easy for this decision to be implemented. And those uh, who are rejoicing, they, they, their rejoicing was too soon. I, I was, the yes. was, yeah, I was going to ask you, it. yes, I was going to ask you, Mr. Barney, Dr. Barney, what the implications would be if, um, at the end of the day, uh, um, this is upheld at the appellate court and the higher court, uh, the Supreme Court, um, what this would mean for the likes of uh, Matawale and Co, who have also uh, defected recently and I had day. Co. But we don't have time. We don't have time. I want to thank you very much for your time. Uh, Mande Obani, PhD, is a legal practitioner, and he's been a guest on the first uh, discussion right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm very grateful. All right. Um, we, we'll move on right here on The Breakfast. Mercy. And of course, when we return, we'll look at the second conversation where the House of Representatives or lawmakers have actually reconsidered the gender bill. We'll be right back. Please stay with us.